Hi, good morning or good afternoon. I hope you and your family are fine and um, especially in those hard times. So the session will be around like threat hunting in Kubernetes and um, we'll start from what is a container up to the Kubernetes cluster. I am, my name is Mutaz. I'm, I'm working in IBM like since um, around four, four ye more than four years and uh, worked in, in different teams as a security researcher, security analyst, threat hunter, um, mainly around um, EDRs, cloud, hybrid cloud, containers and many different um, directions. You can reach me um, or using LinkedIn or by email um, because we, we might have different ba backgrounds so I will try to um, to cover like the most uh, b basics so we'll start from what is a container and this is really a nice uh, whiteboard by Julia Evans but we'll do it like in uh, a practical uh, a practical way so let us run uh, an ubuntu container directly so we have the container up and running um, the container is just like a process so it's not uh, really um, it's just like a process running in its own namespace or you can say like an isolated process to see to see that like in a practical way let us run a process so i, I want to do a, a bank request but we don't have uh, uh, the bank uh, command or utility installed in uh, the ubuntu container so i will just install it quickly okay so we are inside the container and if we'll do like a ping uh, command to add dot add dot add dot add and the process is running it's running inside the container and if we'll go back to the host system and we'll do like bs grab ping we'll see it running so every container is just like a process, but a process can also have a child processes. So we, we can say like, um, just as it's here, it's just a group of processes or it's just like a process and it, it might have some ch child, some children's, uh, the same, like, um, as it is a process if we want to monitor like any security aspects we can see um, like the, those are different containers in other words different processes each one running in its own namespace all of them sharing the same kernel and uh, this is like the value of uh, the containers versus virtual machines we don't we don't have to copy the operating system kernel for each container so all of them sharing the same kernel and the added um, because all of them having the same kernel then if we'll monitor or if we'll have our security visibility at the kernel level then we will see everything happening in those containers because for any container, if this container wants to create a process, cre creating a process is a system call. So it, 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 it will be passed to the kernel. If, if this container wants to create a network connection, it's another system call. So having the, ker having the visibility at the kernel level will see everything that will be executed in every container, uh, every network connection, every process creation, every file modification, every file creation, 
every system call activity will go through the kernel and for that we we have like an open source solution called sysflow it's a lightweight um, container aware solution to to get this kernel visibility to see every process execution every file modifications and so on and using it we can achieve um, um, the container runtime security we can detect several attack tactics and techniques or miter tactics and techniques we can do some for it will help us to do some foreign sex and threat hunting so it will expand the um, um, the security team visibility to into this new uh, container and uh, co container landscape oh, okay so we know what is a container it's just simply a process isolated process a process running it's in its own namespace we know about the container runtime security we need to have the visibility into what's happening in the container during its runtime and we can achieve that by having our or by having a visibility at the kernel level and um, uh, all of that so far it's just like a container running or a running container um, but um, the, we need something to orchestrate the containers or to manage the containers and for, for that one of the most successful platforms is Kubernetes so in Kubernetes you can have a, a, a cluster like one master node and two worker nodes just like as an example the master node will um, will do the management like if you want to to run a new container it will do the scheduling that cont and to distribute the containers across the worker nodes um, you can, and there is also centralized database and so it will handle all the management or the cluster management aspects so it, it, it will be um, really orchestrated in a, a nice way but all of those um, different technologies um, provides or, or it's um, the, the security analyst needs really to shift or to to address to address this new landscape to cover like um, if someone wants to compromise a container how can we detect it and if he will already compromise if he already compromised a container what can he do next like can he um skillet his privileges or escape the container isolation and control the underlying operating system and if so can 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 he like um, move laterally to the other containers or and control the whole cluster so we'll see like um, one scenario starting from compromising a container and uh, doing the privilege escalation uh, I hope so far so good. It's really hard um, um, to do it like online, not on site. But I think um, we'll also have like uh, a question and the answer session at the end. So feel free to to ask like any question. I I don't want to continue in the slides, so I will jump to. Um, a live demo to see how how the attack or the initial stage of uh, the one attack vector to a kubernetes cluster or to a container and then to escalate it to the whole cluster and we'll also see how we can detect it as we are going through uh, the attack phases uh, this is my master node i have one worker node here and let me exit from this container so I'm in uh, node 1 
I will go to the master node. Let's do kubectl get pods. Uh, I need to just to change to a non root user kubectl uh, get pods. Um, this one I should have removed that before our session. I will just remove it quickly. Still removing it. Yep. Let's do it again. Get pods. So we uh, we, we have one pod, one pod or a container is running in uh, in the cluster. To see it's running in uh, which worker node, we can see it's running in uh, worker node uh, node one, which is this one. And um, I've also created um, a service for it, so we can see we have um, a, set, a node port service running, and this is the port from where we can access that uh, container. If we'll go to to our browser we can access it here so we, like in simple words we just uh, I, I just have the daemon vulnerable web app, uh, web app running as a container so we we have a vulnerable container in the cluster and um, it, it's just like an easy example where we have several um, vulnerabilities or uh, um, several weaknesses in this container but the same example can be in any other container so if we'll go to command injection and we'll do like uh, um, we'll inject the ls command we can see the bank request uh, succeeded and then we have um, the results of uh, the list command so if we are able to execute any commands in that container some people might say like oh, it's already an isolated container so it's not that um, big risk let's say and the container will be isolated from the underlying operating system but um, in kubernetes every container will have an automatically assigned token Using this token, it can like communicate with the API server or with the kubelet. So we and that token it's automatically mounted to like a local file in that container. So the, the attacker just need to read that local file inside the container to get the container specific token, and then later based on that container privileges or permissions he will be able to do other things so if we'll go to here we can uh, just uh, print the content of that file and we'll get the the token that's assigned to that container and this this one so this is like an automatically assigned token the user the the devops or the deployment engineers can also assign different tokens for different containers but there's also a default one so if we'll use um, this token and we'll use it to call the kubernetes apis so we have in the cluster an api server we'll use this token to call different apis from this server i will copy it and I already have some uh, initial conf configuration to 
to save like the token in a config file and if we'll um, here I have like a Kali machine I will just paste them and I already have the kubectl uh, commands here so if I will do get pots we can the, the we can see the results so we are able to send API requests from our Kali machine to the uh, to the Kubernetes API server and using the container token. Uh, this one it's really a nice one to detect. Like we have the different um, symptoms. The first one, uh, someone calling the API server using the container token so it's a leaked container token and he's calling it from outside the cluster so if, we'll, if for my demo I will be using uh, Curadar it's just um, um, like um, a security a SIM solution and th there are m many SIM solutions if you want to to try Curadar there is a community edition I'm also using it in uh, in my home to secure my home network uh, it's free and you, you can try it or you can try um, Elasticsearch or other solutions so if we'll go to here we can see the Kubernetes um, auditing so what I what I have done is um, I'm forwarding the API logs from uh, the cluster to my log management solution uh, you can do that from uh, the, the the master node configuration I can just highlight it quickly from here and you need to add some flags so I added those three flags uh, to, the first one to define the audit policy which logs to log or not the second one where to save the logs in this uh, log file and the format I, I choose JSON and th th that's uh, most of the config configuration uh, I've also shared my audit policy on, online so if you want the audit policy so I, I have shared my uh, audit policy here you, you can see it here audit policy.yaml and I've also shared my syslog ng uh, daemon set configuration and if you want to use fluentd you can also use the config from here uh, the other thing is um, so we are getting the Kubernetes API logs here let me filter them like um, in the last five minutes we did that uh, uh, list bots from here to get bots or list bots and we can see the kubernetes event this is the json event that was locked and um, we can detect that it's uh, this uh, pod listing or container listing command was done using um, a container user or the container specific user and uh, we can see the source IP is an IP outside the cluster range so someone using the container token to to call the Kubernetes APIs and um, now, now the next thing is based on this token the attacker can do other things like um, he can try to execute commands in other containers or he can try to create another container or another privileged container so what we'll do here 
I already have um, let me print it Kali I already have um, a Kali pod here to use like um, we'll launch a Kali container and as Kali has different at uh, attacking tools or utilities and we don't need to install them again and again so we can use just this container I'm going to set the privileged flag and to mount this um, uh, to mount the, the host file system kubectl apply minus f kali so kali pod created kubectl get pods container it's still uh, creating it it's running now and we, we can also detect um, several symptoms um, one uh, like uh, based on this one the first one someone creating a container that we usually don't create so in, in production we don't expect a devop engineer or ss admin to create a kali container um, the other one it's a privileged container it's really a red flag because privileged container can access anything in uh, the host system the other the third symptom is a, a container mounting this the slash from the host system so it's it will this container will have access to the whole fi host file system and we can detect all of that using um, 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 I need to, to pause it I, I just, so w once a pod will be created the Kubernetes API logs will uh, create this event create a pod has been created or create a pod um, if you will go to the JSON event we, we can check it from here or we can check some details like uh, it's already here privileged uh, container it's true uh, it's mounting uh, the slash from the host file system uh, the name of the container is Kali container and the authorization decision was allowed so we can detect all of those different symptoms like uh, someone used a container token to create another container or um, also the same container it's mounting um, a sensitive or um, the host root file system and it's also a privileged container and also it's a Kali uh, container so all those different symptoms does not indicate um, a normal uh, devop activity uh, we have a privileged we have a container uh, a privileged container and let's try to access it we are inside uh, our kali container let's check here um, as we mounted uh, uh, the host root file system under slash host root we can like um, modify it like anything and like w one of the different threats is like do we expect the container to modify a file like um, etc bus wd so do you expect a container to modify such a file or uh, the shadow file so we, we don't expect the, the container to modify such a critical files in uh, the underlying operating system and the attacker can um, just modify it using any text editor or we can just uh, change the process root directory to uh, host root
and if we'll add a user now it will the user will be added in the underlying operating system because we are will modify the etc bus wd in the underlying operating system so let's add mic one so we we've added mic one this user um, we are, we are already we are inside the container but the user has been added to the underlying um, operating system and using this in recently added user we can ssh to the worker node using it and we can uh, see what we can access uh, let me ssh to it so 192.168.0.91 and the user is mic1 the password and we successfully logged into the node 1 using the, this added user and the, um, this activity will also introduce different symptoms like container adding a user in, in the underlying operating system or container modifying a critical or sensitive file like etc bus wd in the underlying host and sometimes the attacker might ssh to that container while he's inside to that worker node while he's inside this container so we can see a container doing some ssh activities or other symptoms like um, we don't expect really um, someone to add a new user to a worker node those worker nodes will are managed only by the master node so no one should really create a new user in this worker node or even to ssh to the worker nodes and we can detect also those activities using um, the standard uh, we can also utilize the standard linux logs so if we'll check uh, the last five minutes we should see some uh, uh, also stand let me see so we can see here uh, in uh, the node one a user account has been added so if we'll go to it this is the standard Linux authentication logs we can see a user account has been added the username is Mike one this is the user ID, um, this is the home directory, and so on. And also, the attacker can make it a, as a privileged user. He just need to uh, to change the user ID to zero. So if we'll change, oh, sorry. Let me exit from here. I will do it from here slash host root etc bus wd. We don't have them here. We can Because the containers will have just the minimal uh, needed utilities I'm installing nano and let's get it as so to make it a privileged user we just need to change the UID to zero and it will be effectively root user So now we, the user that we have created it's also a privileged user um, and if we we'll go back to here um, so we we compromised a container 
using a, vo uh, a, vo a command injection vulnerability we can inject even a reverse shell here but we, we just uh, e-code uh, the container token then we can use the container token to call different uh, Kubernetes APIs based on the token privileges we can do different things maybe if this token does not allow us to create um, a pod directly maybe using this token will be able to access something else and then maybe a database or another container and then from there we'll have another path to escalate our privileges but using this container we were able to to create another pod and we created a privileged one and the one that shares or that mounted the host root file system into the container and then we used that um, if, while we are inside the container we added a user in the underlying operating system then we SSH to the worker node using the recently added user and um, you can really do anything um, you want at this stage in this um, in this worker node you can access even the other containers and so on um, if you want to achieve persistence you will need to run like um, a reverse shell so um, and um, to run a reverse shell it can be done in Linux in a single command like um, this one so let's see um, let me exit this one so here we have the worker node uh, and we have the Kali machine here the attacker machine will be listening for uh, 444 port and if we we'll manage to run this command in the worker node it will connect back to the attacker machine so this is the Kali box is listening and we have a, uh, the reverse connection arrived from here we can do anything host name f config <coughs> and we can see we, we have a reverse shell here and it's really also easy to to detect such kind of uh, reverse or bind shells because we'll see um, there, there, are, there are multiple symptoms one can be like a network connection created out of a bash process another one can be like uh, a process and the process file descriptors for input and output will be a network socket um, and um, uh, yeah so I think and if we want to detect it we can use also um, the open source CC flow because we will have a visibility into the process and network and file activities so if we we'll, uh, search for this is flow events we can see we can see a process connecting to a remote host and this process is the bash process and it's connecting to um, this destination port this is the sysflow event that will be logged in that case and um, um there are um, really different visibility levels because if we want to to do the same from inside the container we'll have the container details the container name the container image id uh, and so on another example can be if uh, we'll do like uh, well I, I think so far um, so good and so we, we 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 have seen different um, symptoms how we can 
do mo most of or the, the, uh, different attack or techniques and uh, at the cluster level um, what the attacker can do is um, he can each Kubernetes cluster has um, like or at the beginning the Kubernetes clusters have unsecured port without using it you can call any APIs without any authentication without any authorization but then this entry or this port um, is disabled now by default but if the attacker already compromised the cluster then he can just re-enable this unsecured port to in a way to achieve uh, persistence or as a backdoor because it can be really re-enabled so the attacker can just re-enable that option uh, we can do many other um, um, like we can hunt for different things like successful API requests from different geographies for the same user or we can even baseline which users are usually calling which APIs uh, we can see like um, unusual uh, API requests from unusual user agents or from unusual countries so we we can do different API security analysis or the traditional API security analysis use cases and um, so I, I think this is most of um, the things that I uh, I really wanted to to show and I think it's really um, like powerful to see like uh, how we can detect different threats in, in this new landscape at the container level at the worker level and at the whole cluster level and how we can combine different data sources so we can get uh, the kubernetes api logs we can get uh, uh, the sysflow logs to see what's happening in uh, every container and it's an open source solution you can check it um, uh, this is the github link for sysflow and um, we can also get the standard Linux logs so th the more data sources the more evidence that we will have and all, all different data sources will complement each other so you can correlate um, from different sources and um, yeah I think that's uh, most of the points I'm ready for uh, uh, any questions I hope you enjoyed it I'm sorry it's really hard to to do like um, an on online session but it's out of um, our control I hope next year we'll uh, get back to this nor to the normal security conferences so thank you all and uh, stay safe